Okay, so the Mandela effect. You remember that time when you saw something that was so familiar, yet something about it was off? Something maybe you couldn't quite put your finger on until someone pointed it out? Maybe a changed letter, a small design choice, a few missing or changed words or phrases in a quote? This is the Mandela effect. The idea of shared false memories. Because maybe you could write this off as just something that you thought was odd, but when many people begin to remember something being slightly or even sometimes very different from the truth, it makes you start to question what's really going on here. Sometimes it might be something small and insignificant that you can look past, but sometimes it'll be something so ingrained in your memory, something so personal that you swear you remember it being different. That idea is called the Mandela Effect. The concept of shared false memories, which have many different explanations, from parallel and alternate universes to social and cognitive reinforcement of alleged and incorrect details. One thing is for certain though. These cases of the Mandela Effect are very interesting to look at and examine. So today, we're going to do just that with this iceberg created by Silent Chatterbox 52 who also created another iceberg I covered a while ago, the unused and cut video game content iceberg. But this one here has quite a bit to offer, broken up into seven tiers with each of them getting more obscure and strange as it goes on. We start from the most well-known cases and get down to the more weird and uncanny ones. So without further delay, let's jump into the Mandela Effect Iceberg. Nelson Mandela died in prison. The one that started it all. Not only is it one of the most well-known cases, but it's also the very case that this is even named after, as it relates to a false memory held by a lot of people that the former president of South Africa and activist Nelson Mandela died in prison sometime in the 80s. When in fact, he lived on for much longer, dying in December of 2013 at the age of 95. It's a somewhat understandable case when you realize he spent 27 years in prison, but it's also kind of weird because he became the president of South Africa from 1994 to 1999, and you'd think that'd be something that more people would remember. And don't get me wrong, some did, but I guess when it comes to America and other western countries, this wasn't as well known of a fact. Although many of those who claim to remember Mandela dying in prison in the 80s also recall news reports and coverage of the event, leading to wild theories of conspiracies and parallel universes and realities. And of course, this effect as we know it now today. Berenstein Bears this is also one of the most well-known cases, and for some, also one of the most compelling, due to it being a part of a lot of people's childhoods. So let me just come right out of the gate with this. Which of these two spellings seems correct to you? Is it Berenstain Bears or Berenstein Bears? Well, most people would say Berenstein, but actually it's always been Berenstain, which a lot of people just can't wrap their heads around, and I definitely get it. I don't really remember growing up with this book series too much, but just looking at the spelling, I mean, Berenstein just seems correct, right? And I think that's what a lot of this boils down to. Most people are familiar with last names including Steen, but not Stain. That's pretty uncommon. I think that's the simple explanation behind this one. It was most likely just misremembered and even misread and misspoken for years, simply because of this rare spelling. Sinbad's Shazam This one is really interesting because it's a false memory of an entire movie that some people claim to remember from their childhoods. A film titled Shazam, which starred the American stand-up comedian Sinbad, who was said to play a genie in the film, which was thought to have released in the 1990s. However, there are a couple of different explanations for this one. First off, in 1996, there actually was a film called Kazam that starred Shaq as a genie, which a lot of people probably just misremembered. 
Also, Sinbad himself chimed in, saying that he did do a skit where he was dressed as a genie, which some people might have confused for an actual film. Also, can't forget to mention, in 2017, he was involved in an April Fool's prank with College Humor, where they made a short film starring him as the genie, with supposed lost footage from Shazam. Curious George's Tale yeah, that's right. Apparently Curious George never had a tail. Even going back through basically every piece of Curious George media, it's just not there, which is strange. I mean, doesn't this image just look off? Like, which one of these do you remember? For me, the tail definitely looks better, but I think this is just because we almost always associate monkeys with tails. So, seeing one without a tail is just such a weird thing that we don't even really acknowledge it. Looney Tunes So, which one of these spellings of the Looney Tunes looks correct to you? For me and a lot of other people, we immediately remember tunes as in cartoons, but actually this isn't the correct spelling, strangely enough. It's always been spelled tunes, like as in music, I guess. This one is just so strange to me, and I think kind of like Curious George's Tale, it's just such an odd choice that people's brains won't recognize this spelling until they go back and actually look at the evidence. Because it's a cartoon, right? So tunes would make the most sense, but I guess not. Apparently it was titled Looney Tunes because it was about the music and not really the animation aspect at least when it was initially created. Monopoly Man's Monocle This one's also pretty crazy, so which of these looks right to you? Is it the one with the monocle or without? Because apparently he never had the monocle. Crazy stuff. I mean, this just looks weird to me. Again, I think this one boils down to associations and filling in gaps of memory, because we usually associate these eyeglasses with old guys with top hats and mustaches. Also, it could be because of the mascot Mr. Peanut from the company Planters, who does in fact wear the monocle. And apparently there were also some obscure instances in which the Monopoly guy did have the monocle, but generally he is seen without one. Luke, I am your father. Despite this being one of the most quoted lines in movie history, it's almost always misquoted, leading to this being one of the most popular and interesting cases of the Mandela Effect in film. Everyone recognizes the iconic line from Darth Vader as, No Luke, I am your father. But that's not actually what he says in the film. Really he says, No. I. I'm your father. Now, my thoughts on why this is misquoted are pretty simple. I think the quote just changed slightly over time so that people could actually understand what they were trying to say. Because nothing is more awkward than saying something and waiting for someone to react just for them not to get the reference. So I think people just added this small additional context to the quote so that people could easily recognize it. And after that, it just spread, and many people adopted it, and it just kind of stuck. Kit Kat This one isn't too crazy, at least compared to the other spelling ones in this list. Still, do you remember there being a hyphen between Kit and Cat? Well, some people do. But I gotta say, I don't. Looking at them both side by side, the one without it looks right to me to be honest. But I guess people assumed it did have this hyphen because it sounds like two words put together. Pikachu's Colored Tail This one really got me. And I'm not even that big of a Pokemon fan or anything. I mean, I played a couple of the games when I was a kid, but still. One of these just looks off, right? Let me rephrase that. Which of these do you remember from the games, the anime, whatever? This one, right? With the black tip on the tail? Because that one actually isn't correct. 
Pikachu has actually never had black on its tail. But this could be explained by a couple of things. For one, Pikachu's evolutions do have black on their tails. Also, it seems that there could be black on the tip because it would actually match his ears. But it doesn't end there for Pikachu Mandela effects, because apparently Pikachu has two brown stripes on its back. Now, a lot of people probably already knew this, but this just comes down to Pikachu not really revealing his back too much, at least from what I've seen. But still, it does look kind of odd to me, to be honest. Robber emoji. Cases like these are really interesting, as it involves something that people remember that has never even existed. In this case, it relates to a robber emoji that many people remember vividly, even giving descriptions and artist renditions of what it looked like. And for me, I can't really say I remember this, but it does look like an emoji that could exist. But after a lot of digging, no one could find any trace of this emoji. And it could just be that people were using a couple of emojis together to get that same kind of message. Like using the money bag plus one of the people ones, but I'm not too sure with this one. It's definitely interesting. Interview with a vampire. So I don't know too much about this one, so I can't speak from personal experience, but for those of you who know about this novel or its adaptations, which of these sounds correct to you? Is it Interview with a Vampire, or Interview with the Vampire? To me, I immediately think Interview with a Vampire, but no, it's actually THE Vampire. It's really a small difference, but many people also remember it being the former. There's a couple of theories on this one. First, if you say interview with the vampire fast enough, it can kind of sound like you're just saying a vampire, which over time may have changed what people thought the title really was. Or it could also be that people just think a vampire sounds better than the vampire, because I guess usually in a story there's not just one. Life is like a box of chocolates. So we've got another misquote here, one from the iconic film Forrest Gump, and I'm starting to notice a trend here. It really is the most used movie quotes that get changed over time, and it's pretty interesting. Anyway, this refers to the scene where Forrest is sitting on a bench and says the line, life is like a box of chocolates. Well, actually no. What he really said was, My mom always said, Life was like a box of chocolates. Not too big of a difference there, probably just people changing the quote to make it sound more applicable in a given situation. Using is instead of was because, you know, life is still going, I guess. Febreze. Another small spelling one, but still this one is interesting. Take a look at these two spellings. Which one looks correct to you? If you said Febreze with two E's, surprisingly you'd be incorrect. It only has one E, and always did. Although this one can be pretty easily explained, I think, because obviously the actual word breeze is spelled with two E's, so our brains, I guess, just make the association between that word and the brand Febreze, especially when you say it out loud. It sounds like it should have two E's. Oscar Meyer. Here's another simple spelling one. Which of these looks right? If you said Oscar Meyer with an A, then you would be correct. But that's not how many people, including myself, remember the spelling of this me brand. I think this is yet again just a case of people assuming it was spelled with an E due to that being the more common spelling of this last name. Hello, Clarice. Good morning. So, is this what you remember Hannibal Lecter saying in Silence of the Lambs? Or do you remember him saying, Hello, Clarice? Watching the scene back, it doesn't make much sense for Lecter to say, Hello, Clarice, when right after she introduces herself with her name. 
but it's interesting that this misquote has been going around for many, many years, starting only shortly after the release of the film in the 90s, as there is a Hello Clarice impersonation and quote by Jim Carrey in the film Cable Guy from 1996. Although this could be the actual origin of this misquote, which would be interesting. Fruit of the Loom Cornucopia Now, this one, for me at least, is truly fascinating, because it's such an obscure and weird change that I'm honestly confused at this one. So let's just start off with these two images for the logo of the company. Which of these looks right to you? Doesn't it seem like the one missing this thing, the cornucopia, is wrong? Well, apparently no, this is the actual logo. There is no cornucopia on it. Now, this is just strange. How did so many of us misremember this strange item being behind the fruit? I mean, I didn't even know what a cornucopia was until I googled it. But still, it feels like this was always there. And interestingly, there are many examples of this brand being parodied using the cornucopia. Not to mention the fact that in a 1994 newspaper article, the logo is described as having a cornucopia in it. I guess the best explanation for this is that cornucopias in general are usually accompanied by fruits in any image you google. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what this thing is meant to do in the first place. So it could just be the association factor. Still, this is one of the most interesting and compelling cases. Sex in the City I don't know much about this sitcom series, but right out of the gate, this small title change seems like another case of it sounding different when said, which may have made people believe the title was slightly different. What am I even talking about here? Well, there's an HBO drama series from the 90s called Sex and the City, although some people remember it being called or titled Sex in the City. Mona Lisa Never Smiled So that title is a little bit of a spoiler, but before I show you the Mona Lisa, think of what the painting looks like in your head. Now, which of these looks like what you pictured? For me, it was definitely the one with no smile, but that's the fake one. She really did have a smile on her face in the real painting, which is really interesting. It's been said that the expression can look a little different from certain angles, but to me it definitely seems like a smile on the real Mona Lisa, despite some recreations and replicas looking a little different. Fruit Loops Alright, you know the drill by now. Which of these do you remember? Because if you said Fruit Loops with fruit spelled correctly, then you'd actually be wrong. This is the correct one. It's another case of a small but strange spelling choice that is just so weird that we choose as humans to not recognize it. At least that goes for some of us anyway. But hey, now you know. Volkswagen logo is connected. Now, this one is pretty funny because it's such a small detail, but it turns out a lot of people who either owned a Volkswagen or saw them years ago remember seeing no gap in the logo, which of course is now present. Now, it's one of those things that's such a small detail that I think people just omitted it from their memory as it really serves no purpose and honestly looks better without it. Plus, it's actually so small, who is even going to notice that unless you point it out? C-3PO never had a silver leg. I'm not even a big Star Wars guy or anything, but this was just crazy to me when I first saw it. Which of these do you remember from the movies, or even anything Star Wars related? Because if you said the one without the silver leg, that's wrong. Apparently he's always had this silver leg, even since the original trilogy. Even the toys and everything have this silver leg, and somehow I and many others just never noticed. Although, there are some old figures that have both legs gold. Still, it's a weird one for sure. Jiffy 
Now this one didn't really get me like some of the others because I literally always buy this brand of peanut butter, but for some the Jif brand just doesn't seem right. And they remember it being called Jiffy, with the jar looking something like this. And I mean, to be honest, Jiffy does sound more like a peanut butter brand than Jif. Like, I feel like I've heard a lot of people call it Jiffy, so I guess that might have perpetuated this misconception. Ford logo with no squiggle. More car stuff. Not gonna take too much time with this one, it's a really small difference, but something that a lot of people feel pretty strongly about. I think Joe Rogan even weighed in on this one. Basically the Ford logo has this small squiggle on the F that most people don't notice, and don't remember because it's such a small thing. Not as small as the Volkswagen Gap, but still, that's why I think many people don't remember it. Elementary My Dear Watson so this one's pretty simple and a little different because the quote, Elementary My Dear Watson, was not in any of the original books written by Arthur Doyle. However, it is actually what was said in the movies, and is the actual origin of this quote. So less of a Mandela Effect situation, and more of just something that didn't come from the original source material. Mirror Mirror on the Wall. This is one of those quote ones that is just wild to me. So anyway, whoever's seen the Disney animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarves knows this quote. Hell, even if you haven't seen the movie, you've probably heard it at one point or another. The scene in question shows the evil queen with the mirror, and what does she say? Mirror Mirror on the Wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well no, actually she says this. Magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? That one word change has got people scratching their heads. I mean, just look at the comments on clips of this scene. Everyone remembers it mirror mirror on the wall. Again, I think this is just a perpetuated misquote that has been passed on to many people over the years. A movie was even made called Mirror Mirror which just goes to show how deep this misquote was ingrained in our culture. Really fascinating stuff. Depends Adult Diapers Now I gotta say, I didn't expect adult diapers of all things to appear on a Mandela effects list, but here we are. Anyway, some people remember it being called Depends instead of just Depend. And interestingly, out of all things, this is one of the cases that is most compelling for some people. However, I have seen some point out that this could be a simple case of people adding on the S to make it sound plural, which is something that some people do with other brands and products. Risky Business Dance Scene in the film Risky Business, there is a scene with Tom Cruise dancing and singing, and it's one of the most famous scenes from the film. So much so that it was even parodied in The Simpsons. And curiously, even in that version, Homer can be seen wearing sunglasses. Not just there too, there are other parodies of the scene, and pretty much all of them have the person wearing sunglasses. Even though Tom Cruise wasn't wearing any in the actual scene. Now there's kind of an explanation for this one, because in the film, Tom Cruise's character is constantly seen wearing the sunglasses. So you begin to associate the character of Ricky with the glasses, and maybe your mind just remembers them because they were in a lot of the other scenes in the film and even on the posters. But not only that, the parodies of the scene also probably perpetuated this, because they might have used the glasses to help show the audience who and what they were actually making a parody of. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. So did that sound right to you? Or do you remember it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood? because that's what a lot of people who grew up with this show remember. But it's not actually the case. Now, this one is kind of understandable, it's a small change, and maybe it was just another quote that changed slightly over time with people saying it. 
Tinkerbell riding the Disney logo. Bruh, no way this didn't happen. I watched way too many DVDs when I was a kid with this exact animation for it not to exist. No way. I can vividly remember it, like I can play it back in my head. There's even been some recreations of it that look pretty faithful to what I and a lot of others can remember, but apparently it never happened. Specifically the intro with the blue background and the white castle. Pretty crazy stuff. Captain Crunch. So a lot of these changed name ones have kind of small differences. You know, a letter or two. But this one is pretty wild considering it cuts out so many letters that a lot of people remember seeing. Because if this is how you remember Captain Crunch, well, you're mistaken. Because this is actually how Captain Crunch has always been spelled. And I mean, to me this just looks weird. However, this probably comes down to the fact that it's still called Captain Crunch despite this awkward spelling, which naturally made people recognize that word and fill in the gaps in their head with the actual spelling of it. Although it's kinda crazy that we would buy this cereal and look directly at the box every time we poured ourselves a bowl and never notice the way it was spelled. Even though it may seem like the logo and spelling changed and that the company was Cap'n. What if I told you? What if I told you that Morpheus never actually said what if I told you? No, but seriously, apparently he never said it. Despite all the countless memes that were made since like 2012. The full line that a lot of people remember is, What if I told you that everything you knew was a lie? But that was never actually said. And it's likely that this quote actually came about from the memes or at least was popularized enough by them to the point that people thought this was an actual line from the movie. Although the origin of What If I Told You could go back even further, as there have been claims that this line was used in various reviews of the film, and even certain scripts from around the film's release in 1999. But these accounts cannot be confirmed. Beam Me Up Scotty not really a Star Trek guy, honestly I haven't really watched any of the movies or the shows or anything, but even I have still heard this quote many times over the years. And what do you know, Captain Kirk never actually said it. He said similar lines such as beam me up and Scotty beam us up, but never this phrase exactly. And it's most likely just a simple and easier to understand misquotation that kinda stuck around over the years with people saying it. Shaggy's Adam's Apple. Here's one that I can also specifically remember from watching the original Scooby-Doo series as a kid, and a lot of others recall this aspect of Shaggy's character design as well, a prominent Adam's Apple, which many people can remember was used for comedic effect in scenes where he would gulp in fear. However, apparently he doesn't have one. And even the proposition that it was only sometimes shown either when he was scared or eating something, well that falls flat too, because in the scenes of Shaggy gulping, there is no visible Adam's apple, which is just kind of mind boggling to me. Double Stuff Oreos Some people remember them being called Double Stuff with two Fs, or even Double Stuffed but not double stuff with one F, which for some reason is what it actually is. Now apparently in the UK they actually are called double stuff with two Fs, so that explains images of those that you might have seen, but as for double stuff, they have never been called that as far as I'm aware. And this is again probably just a case of it sounding better to call it something else, and that nickname kind of spread around and eventually stuck in the public consciousness. A Bug's Life 2. This is a crazy one, because it's not just a spelling error, a misquote, or anything like that, but a full-on movie that many people believe they remember watching as kids. A sequel to the animated film A Bug's Life, simply titled A Bug's Life 2. A post on Reddit describes the alleged film. 
quote, I swear I remember A Bug's Life 2 existing when I was a kid. I know there's a blooper that makes a joke about it and how Toy Story got a sequel instead, but I remember seeing the movie itself. I don't remember a ton. I remember the poster, first of all. It was a darker shade of blue with all the main characters on it. The logo was the same, but the number 2 was on the end, obviously, and it was a leaf with bites taken out of it, so it looked like a number 2. I also remember the tagline being, the bugs are back in town, and the plot was something along the lines of one of the bugs has an argument with his friends and leaves them, ending up in a nearby city and sneaking into a motel slash hotel, and the other bugs look around the town to find him. I realize that's similar to the plot of Toy Story 2, but it was more so about the bugs exploring the city and cool stuff involving that rather than a rescue and such. The rescue was more so motivation to get them there. I'm not sure if I'm misremembering because this seems like a lot of details. However, the easy answer to this one is that people are just confusing a second Bugs Life film with another movie called Ants, which actually released that same year. JC Penny. Okay, this one is not that crazy in my opinion, just one of those things that some people tend to misspell, as there is actually an E before the Y in JC Penny, which some claim is an example of the Mandela effect, but it really has always been JC Penny, as it is named after its founder, James Cash Penny, spelled with the E. Another case of an unusual spelling making people second guess themselves. I was a Teenage Gary Squidward transformation scene. It seems like this Spongebob scene always comes up no matter what I'm talking about. Lost media in general, fake lost media, and even now the Mandela effect. But I'll go over it again. So in the episode I was a Teenage Gary, where Spongebob and Squidward transform into snails, Spongebob actually has a full transformation sequence, which a lot of people also remember happening with Squidward after he is injected with the snail plasma. However, in all versions of the episode, this scene is absent, and it simply cuts to after Squidward has already transformed, leading some to believe that there was maybe a deleted scene or something of the full transformation. However, there is no proof of such a scene's existence. You like me. You really like me. This refers to an Oscar speech by actress Sally Field that is often parodied and quoted, but usually incorrectly. She is often attributed as saying, you like me, you really like me. But this is what she actually said. You like me right now. You like me. And if you look at the comments on this, a lot of people don't remember this version of the speech, especially the right now part. Judge Judy used the gavel. So the American reality court drama Judge Judy has been around since the 90s, for 25 seasons and over 6,000 episodes. Yes, you heard that right. And in all that time, as far as I'm aware, Judge Judy has surprisingly never used or slammed the gavel, despite many people recalling that she did on multiple occasions. I think this is another case of just common associations, because you know, we associate judges typically with the gavel, because of certain pieces of media and such. Even if it's not Judge Judy, which probably influences our brains and our memory, filling in those gaps of information. Cheez-Its. Okay, so this one is kind of funny to me because Cheez-Its, don't ask why, became a pretty big meme in my friend group for a while, so I knew for sure it was Cheez-It, not Z or S at the end or anything. Although a lot of people claim that there was a Z at the end and it was called Cheez-Its. But here's the thing with this one, and a lot of the other ones that people remember having a plural title. A lot of people remember some sort of letter at the end because you never really refer to a single Cheez-It. You call them Cheez-Its because there's a lot of them. Also, the Z at the end specifically probably has something to do with the Z in cheese, making many people feel like the letter Z is an important component of their brand and spelling. 
King Henry VIII holding a turkey leg. A lot of people claim to remember a specific painting of King Henry VIII holding up a turkey leg. And once again, it's something that is often referenced and parodied, even in an episode of The Simpsons once again. But apparently no such painting exists. This could possibly be explained by the fact that there are depictions of King Henry VIII holding up something in his hand, which could have been then changed to a turkey leg in parodies, and eventually that kind of just stuck around and is now commonly associated with him, which is likely the case with some of these other entries. Starbucks Crown Alright, so for those of you familiar with the Starbucks logo, which of these looks right to you? Because for some people, they don't recall there being a star on the crown. Even some people who worked at Starbucks don't remember it. But it's pretty much always been there, at least since the initial logo redesign. And if you do stop and think about it for a second, the company is called Starbucks. So having a star in the logo does make sense. Jungle Books, Baloo Wears a Coconut Bra In the original 1967 Jungle Book film, the character Baloo is commonly remembered as wearing a coconut bra while he does a dance. But this one actually has a rational explanation, because while it might not happen in that movie, Baloo does do a dance with a bra in the animated series Tailspin, which is likely where people remember this from, and just confuse it for being in the Jungle Book film. We are the champions of the world. This one's pretty crazy, and just from the title you probably already know what this one is. Queen's hit song We Are the Champions is one that pretty much everyone has heard, and at the end of the song, Freddie Mercury sings We Are the Champions, and that's it. He doesn't say in the 1977 studio version of the world even though pretty much everyone expects it and even sings it when listening to the song. But there is an explanation behind this too, because Freddie Mercury when performing the songs live would add of the world at the end of the song during some of their performances, which I think stuck with a lot of people and honestly sounds a lot better than it just kind of ending abruptly. So a lot of people adopted this and began to think it was part of the original song. Although some claim that they remember of the world in their CDs and such, which had the studio and greatest hits versions of the song. <laughs> Laughing Cow Nose Ring This is another one regarding a company logo, that of the cheese brand called the Laughing Cow. Now if you're familiar with this logo, tell me, is something missing here? because some think that they remember this cow having some sort of nose ring, perhaps in a gold color. This is probably another case of common associations, as bulls commonly do have these nose rings, but throughout its long history of logo changes, I couldn't find any that had the described nose ring. Spike the Gremlin so for those of you that have seen the first Gremlins movie, do you remember this guy? The main antagonist and Gremlin leader character? What is his name? Spike or Stripe? Well it's actually Stripe to the surprise of some people. My only guess for this one is that Spike is a much more common name than Stripe, and years after seeing the film it may be hard to remember the exact name of the character. Scary Movie, I See White People This is another one of those cases where I've never seen the actual movie, but I have heard people quote this multiple times, and apparently it was never said. In the film itself, the character Shorty just says, I see dead people, which is obviously just a reference to the sixth sense, but many people remember a parody version of him saying, I see white people which honestly would make a lot more sense, as this movie, titled Scary Movie, is literally dedicated to making parodies of horror films. And spoofing this line makes a lot of sense, and people claim they remember laughing really hard at this scene, and it just didn't happen. Wild stuff. 
but a character did say this exact line in another film called Undercover Brother from 2002, and I guess it just kind of spread after that, with people for some reason misassociating that quote with Scary Movie. Wizard of Oz Scarecrow Gun This is a very popular Mandela effect, to no one's surprise because it surrounds one of the most famous films of all time, and it's quite the shocking twist, as a lot of us remember this movie as just a wholesome musical adventure, although it is no stranger to the darker side of things. When you look at stuff like what went on behind the scenes, as well as various conspiracies and urban legends around the film, but Tell me, did you remember Scarecrow having a gun? No? Neither did I, or basically anyone for the most part. He for some reason has some sort of revolver. There's a couple of theories for this one. First of all, it's such an old film that some of the restored versions actually lose quite a bit of detail, and it would honestly be hard to tell what Scarecrow was holding in this scene for some versions. Also, this scene in particular is actually said to be cut from a lot of versions of the film as well, which could also explain why some people don't remember it. Chick-fil-A Familiar with the fast food chain known for their chicken sandwiches, Chick-fil-A? Well, how do you remember it being spelled? Like this, or this? While many people don't remember there being a K at the end of Chick, but it has always been there, with Chick-fil-A themselves even weighing in on it, stating that it is the only correct way of spelling it. Mickey Mouse didn't have a tail. Here we go again, but this time it's the opposite. Many people remember Mickey Mouse not having a tail, when in reality he does and always has. So what's the explanation here? Parallel universes? No, actually I think this one is pretty straightforward. Because Mickey Mouse has a very small and thin tail design. So in a lot of the animations, the tail is either tucked into his pants or is not even animated. So yes, sometimes Mickey Mouse is drawn without his tail, despite the character actually having one. Which would explain why some don't remember it. Some also think it could be because there are a lot of other distinguishing features that people are drawn to and remember about the character, such as his eyes, ears, and classic overalls, or pants. We'll get to that whole debate a little later. Lucy, you got some splainin' to do. So what is this referring to? Well, this is an alleged quote and catchphrase from the character Ricky Ricardo on the American sitcom series I Love Lucy, which people remember him saying despite this exact line never being used. It's just another one of those misquotes that's evolved over time. Play it again, Sam. Another misquote here, get used to it if you haven't already, there are a ton of these. This time coming from the 1944 film Casablanca. The original quote was actually just, play it Sam, although over the years people began to quote it as, play it again Sam. This could be because in 1969 there was a play written called Play It Again Sam, which was later made into a film in 1972, which probably contributed to people believing this was the real quote. JFK's car had four people in it. Yet another mystery regarding JFK. Add this one to the list, I guess. If you've seen the footage from that day, do you recall how many people were in the car? JFK, his wife, and the driver? Or was there four? Two in the front and two in the back seat? Well, neither of these, actually. There were six people in the car when it all happened. Now, a lot of people don't remember more than four people being in the car, but this one is pretty well documented and simple to explain, despite this event having more mystery and conspiracies than maybe any other event in American history. Obviously your focus when watching the videos and looking at pictures is going to be the back of the car with JFK and the First Lady. Even most of the camera angles focus on the President, which makes sense, right? So it's probably hard to notice that there is actually two members of the Secret Service in front, 
and even more people forget or don't remember that the governor of Texas was in the middle with his wife. Also, you know, most cars that look like this didn't have six seats, so that could have also added to the confusion and absence from people's memories. Uncle Sam's striped hat. Alright, everyone knows Uncle Sam, right? Well, at least my audience from the US should know this character used as the personification of the government. Now, how do you remember his design? Which of these looks like how you remember it? If you said the one with the stripes, you'd be actually mistaken, because his hat simply has stars on it, despite many people believing his hat had stripes. So much so that many artist depictions of the character include the striped hat. So what's going on here? Did his design change over time? What happened? Well, I think this more so has to do with his striped pants, which is a notable feature and something that really sticks out in people's minds. Although it's not always shown in images of him. Actually, the most iconic image of Uncle Sam doesn't show his legs at all. So do our brains just fill in the gaps because we remember the red stripes? I'm not sure, but that's the best explanation I've got. Would you like to play a game? This one really got me. Like, out of all of these, this one hit hard. I guess just cause Saw is kind of a nostalgic movie for me. I actually, like, can't believe this right now. I grew up in the 2000s, so these misquotes from older films and TV shows don't do too much for me, but experiencing this one firsthand is crazy. Not only can I remember people quoting this, like, all my life, but I can even remember Jigsaw saying it in his iconic voice. So what did he actually say then? He says, I want to play a game. So despite this kind of blowing my mind, I think I get it now. People have pointed out that it makes sense that he would say, I want to play a game, instead of, do you want to play a game? Because he's obviously not giving them a choice. And once again, this misquote most likely took over due to parodies as well as memes of this iconic Jigsaw line. Rubik's Cube So this one is pretty simple, but some remember this cube being called the Rubik's Cube spelled with an X. However, this is false. It's actually Rubik's Cube, with a K and an S, and the very simple explanation behind that is that it was created by a man named Erno Rubik, hence the name. The Flintstones this one is kind of hilarious, because for me, I never really watched this show at all, but I still have always heard it been called The Flintstones, no doubt in my mind. However, some people claimed they remembered The Flintstones with no T, which really makes no sense. But hold on, that's not where this thing ends. Whether you remember it as The Flintstones or The Flintstones, according to some, you would both be correct because apparently some people think that the name change keeps flip-flopping over the years and changing back and forth. But I'm pretty sure it's always been Flintstones, as it is something that actually relates to the time period and setting of the show, whereas Flintstones is just a made-up word. But hopefully somehow it switches back to Flintstones after making this video or something, and this can be incorrect. The Karate Kid's Rising Sun Headband So the original Karate Kid film from 1984 is a movie that is relevant and talked about still today, especially with the resurgence and continuation of the story with Cobra Kai. But think back to the original for a second. Do you remember Daniel's headband having a red rising sun on it? Well it was actually a blue flower. However, the design of this blue lotus flower does kind of look similar to the rising sun, although the colors are wrong, but that could be a reason for the confusion. Also, this poster for The Karate Kid 3 probably didn't help things, and could have made people actually think of the rising sun symbol. Run, you fools. 
This one is interesting because both versions of this Gandalf line from the Fellowship of the Ring are technically right. Because in most versions of the film, he says, Bloody you fools. Despite many people remembering he said, run you fools, and he actually did, although only during its original theatrical run, before it was changed and dubbed over to better adapt the source material, and since then it's been fly you fools. CERN logo is a single spiral. So CERN also known as the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is no stranger to conspiracy theories and urban legends. You've got that whole ritual thing, demon portals, and now people even blaming the Mandela effect on them, claiming they are actually responsible for our reality changing. But this entry refers to a specific Mandela effect related to their logo. I guess some people believed that their logo was just a single spiral, however the shape of their logo is actually based on the accelerators at CERN. Also some people think it consists of three sixes, aka 666, just to add to the pile of conspiracy theories related to CERN. Gandhi this one is pretty simple to explain, so we won't waste too much time on it. But a lot of people are confused on how to actually spell Gandhi's name in English. It's actually spelled like this, despite a lot of people in Western countries spelling it like this, which led to a lot of people believing that this was actually the correct spelling. But this is just simply a common misspelling and transliteration of his last name. Cliff's Notes Y'all remember Cliff Notes? I sure do. Came in clutch for high school readings. So like many others, I was surprised to learn that it isn't actually Cliff Notes, but Cliff's Notes with an S. It's a small difference, but everyone I talked to called it Cliff Notes. Now, I can concede that it was always called Cliff's Notes on paper, but everyone pronounces it without the S because it's just easier to say which is why I'm sure a lot of people remember it that way. Daylight Savings Time Now this one is labeled under the spelling category on the iceberg, and I have always definitely heard it called Daylight Savings Time with an S for whatever reason. But in reality, it's called Daylight Saving Time, which to me just sounds a little weird. And I think this one mainly just has to do with the way we typically structure sentences and words in the English vernacular. The Statue of Liberty is on Ellis Island. This is one of those things that when you learn about the truth, it makes a lot of sense, but even so, many people still don't know about it. Because for a lot of people, they think the Statue of Liberty is located on Ellis Island when in reality, it's on an island called Liberty Island, which is less than a mile away. But still, some people believe that due to the Mandela Effect, the statue has moved, with proof of this being photos and videos of New York where the statue should be visible and isn't. There are actually more mysteries and even other Mandela Effects related to the Statue of Liberty, such as people having memories of being inside the torch despite that area being closed since 1916. Back to the Future's terrorists drive a Toyota. In the film Back to the Future, the bad guys drive a blue Volkswagen van, despite many fans of the movie remembering a different car, a white Toyota minivan. And this is another case with people claiming that there was a lot of flip-flopping going on. Some people remember the white van originally, before switching to the blue later on, and some remember the blue before it changed to the white, and then back to the blue again. And for some, this is one of the most compelling cases of the Mandela Effect, at least in terms of film-related cases. Walter Radar O'Reilly's death in M.A.S.H. 
So spoilers, I guess, for this show from the 1970s, but not really because this character called Walter Radar O'Reilly never actually had an on-screen death, even though many people claim to remember it. This was probably believed because the character left the show in season 8, and he is even occasionally mentioned after this point in the series. The entrance to Disney World is Cinderella's Castle. Now I've never been to Disney World near Orlando, Florida, but for those who've been, think about the time you went there and when you first entered the park. Was it through Cinderella's Castle? Well, the castle is actually at the end of Main Street. Not too much else to say here. This could be believed because of how prominent the castle is, not only just in the park, but also in images of Disney World and Disney's brand as a whole. Leonardo DiCaprio won an Oscar before 2016. Now this one is strange for me, because I can remember how big of a deal it was in 2016 that Leo won his first Oscar. Everyone was talking about it. So it is kind of surprising for me to hear that people remember him winning an Oscar before then. Now, did he deserve to win one before then? Well, probably. I mean, that's a different discussion, but that's probably what played into this Mandela effect. But the biggest factor is that he's been nominated for many awards over the years before 2016, and even won Golden Globe Awards for Best Actor in Films such as The Wolf of Wall Street and The Aviator which is most likely what people are remembering. The Weekend. So the Canadian singer and artist The Weekend has an interesting name, as it's missing an E in the end part of Weekend. Something people don't really notice until you look closely at the name. I didn't know it was spelled like this either until I did research for this entry. But this is always what he's called himself. However, apparently he was at one point part of a music duo called The Weeknd, spelled normally, before he went solo and adopted the name without the E at the end. Rod Sterling Again, this is another name one, this time the host of the Twilight Zone, Rod Sterling. Actually wait, no, his name is Rod Serling. Yet again, this is another case of someone being remembered by a common name that is close, but actually incorrect. I'm sure you've seen quite a few people or brands and things called Sterling, but never Serling which is such a rare surname that people immediately opt in their brain for Sterling. Skechers Now, the spelling ones don't usually do too much for me at this point, but this one is one of the ones that kind of shook me. So, Skechers, you know, the shoe brand. How do you remember it being spelled? Is it like this or this? Well, I would guess most people would say this one with the T. But no, apparently Skechers never had a T in its name, which was really surprising to me. Without the T, it just looks weird. Probably because we assume the brand's name comes from the word Sketch. So our brains put together the pieces, and you've got Skechers with a T. Smokey the Bear Only you can prevent forest fires. That's the iconic catchphrase of the mascot Smokey... what? Do you remember it as Smokey the Bear or just Smokey Bear? In reality, it's just Smokey Bear, which to be fair is what I can remember. But a lot of people remember a the in there. I really think this one just boils down to a lot of animal mascots having a name followed by an identifying title, such as the blank. And in this case, people assumed he was called Smokey the Bear. Also, fun fact, he was actually based on a real-life black bear cub that climbed a tree to escape a fire, and was at first called Hotfoot Teddy. Mickey Mouse had overalls. 
Back to Mickey Mouse again. Remember when I mentioned he has overalls? Well, despite a lot of people remembering this key feature, he actually does not. He just has the classic red pants. No suspenders or anything like that. Which many people thought was a key feature of his design that is simply not there in official versions of the character. Some people even specifically remember him snapping these shoulder straps, but there is no evidence of this. E.T. Phone Home Here we are again with the iconic movie quotes. You know the drill by now. But surprisingly with this one, E.T. does say phone home in the movie. Like a bunch of times, he's literally spamming. So I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a case of flip-flopping or not, but uh, yeah, case solved, I guess. And if you're thinking you actually remember him saying E.T. home phone, well, yeah, he said that too. Target's logo has two rings. This is one of those scenarios where at first it seems like you can vividly remember something being one thing, before you take a look at the bigger picture and realize once again, your mind might be playing tricks on you. What do I mean here? Well, take a look at these images. Which of these do you recognize as the Target brand logo? One of these two, right? Well, these are both wrong. The official logo only has one circle around it, despite the two ring one looking most accurate to my eyes at least. And some even remember three rings, which to be fair is what an actual target looks like. You know, for things like shooting and archery, which is probably why people recognize it more. But also from 1962 to 1968, this was the target logo, which looked a lot more, well, like a target. OxyClean You remember that brand of household cleaners, OxyClean? Well, does this look right to you? Or do you remember it like this? Because until I saw this entry, I definitely remembered OxyClean with a Y. Two separate words, too. But apparently there's no space, and it's an I instead. There's a completely different brand called just Oxy, but I don't know. I guess I always just figured it was spelled with a Y because of oxygen or something. But no, the oxy comes from hydrogen peroxide, which now makes a lot more sense. Pepto-Bismol So this one might have flip-flopped on me mid-video. I'm just kidding, but I did record this one wrong initially, thinking it was actually Pepto-Bismol, when in reality it's Pepto-Bismol, which is what I have always heard my whole life, but uh, I guess I second-guessed myself there. So I guess then the question is, why do people throw in that extra L? I guess it's just because of the L at the end of Bismol, but I'm not really sure. I'm not going to talk about this one too much, because like a lot of other cases, it's another one where the way it's pronounced kind of changes how people know what it's called. Yeah, it's called Pepto-Bismol, but every time I've heard it, it's pronounced Pepto-Bismol, which is just a lot easier to say. Whiteout. Again, very similar situation, but honestly this time I was kind of shocked. Remember Whiteout, that thing you'd use to cover up mistakes and such in schoolwork? Think of how it's spelled. For me, I immediately think of just White-Out spelled normally. But apparently, it's always been spelled Whiteout, without the H. Really weird spelling for basically no reason. I mean, I guess it's a stylistic choice, but I think our brains just choose to remember the correct spelling. Chartreuse is a pink color. So for some people, this is a pretty compelling case of the Mandela effect, as a lot of them distinctly remember the color chartreuse as a red or pink shade, when in reality it's closer to a green or yellow. So first off, it's definitely always been green because it's named after a certain French liquor that has that same unique color. 
and as to why some people believed it to be a pink or a red color, there is also another color called puce, which is actually like a dark red or a brownish purple. Also, it's possible that since it's from a liquor, they might associate that color with more of like a red wine potentially, but I'm not really too sure with this one. Mother Teresa was canonized in the 90s. So this one has a pretty simple explanation, at least I think so. Because many people are surprised when they find out Mother Teresa was only considered a saint officially by the Catholic Church as of September 4th, 2016. When a lot of people can remember hearing about her being canonized as a saint back in the 90s. But apparently the canonization process can take a long time. So it was probably already in talks and such for a while. And the media I think still called her Saint Mother Teresa even when it wasn't official yet. Also, she did have a beatification in 2003, which could be what many people are remembering. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. So returning to music Mandela effects here, think about the song Barbie Girl from the 90s. I'm sure most of you have heard it, or have at least heard that line. Well, shockingly, it isn't actually the real line. It's, I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. And similar to many other cases, when you say the fast, especially in something like song lyrics, it can sound like A. Pixie Sticks You can add this to the list of small spelling differences, but honestly this one out of all of them just seems odd. Like I swear I could remember Pixie with an I and an E, not just a Y at the end. It looks strange, doesn't it? But this is the real spelling. Some people also remember sticks, spelled normally, not with an X, but that's a whole nother can of worms. My only explanation for this one is that a lot of us remember the correct spelling of the word Pixie. Because spelling it with a Y is not something you really ever see, and just looks off. Cup-o-noodles. Is it cup-o-noodles, or is it just cup-noodles? Well, today it is called just simply cup-noodles. But before you think you've jumped realities, when this product was first introduced in the states in 1971, it was actually called cup-o-noodles, before it was changed to just cup-noodles in 1993. And despite not being officially named Cup of Noodles since then, I think a lot of people have still held on to that original name. George W. Bush reading The Pet Duck So when the attacks occurred on the World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001, the president at the time, George W. Bush, was at an elementary school while a grade school reading exercise was happening called the Pet Goat. However, for some reason, some people remember it being the Pet Duck, even though no such book exists. Some also thought it was called My Pet Goat, as it was reported in a 2004 documentary that that was the title. But the reason people remember the Pet Duck was because that was actually from Scary Movie 4, and was actually a parody of this event, but this time with aliens. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. This quote is often attributed to Einstein, and is such a popular quote you hear it all the time in media. At least variations of it anyway. But apparently this has been misattributed to Einstein, and he in fact never said it. So then, who did? Well, it's kind of unclear. There are some very similar quotes that have appeared throughout literature over the years, but in a book from Princeton University Press called The Ultimate Quotable Einstein, there is a section called Misattributed to Einstein, which is where this quote can be found. Moses statue doesn't have horns. We got a Bible and religion themed Mandela effect. So the Moses statue created by Michelangelo has some pretty obvious horns coming out of his head. A feature that seems very noticeable when you know about it going in. 
but for a lot of people, more specifically a lot of religious people, they did not know that Moses had horns. And many remember seeing that statue with no visible horns at all. But from every picture I could find from many different years, it always had the horns. Frosty the Snowman Scarf One of the all-time classic characters associated with Christmas. I'm sure you could probably picture what he looks like in your head right now. Something like this, right? Well actually, apparently in most of the TV and book versions of the character, he didn't actually wear a scarf. Crazy, I know. It seems like one of the most prominent features of his design. But there's a very good reason. It's the decorations that usually have the red scarf, which looks more accurate to what you remember, right? Again, I think this is just another case of our brains filling in the blanks when it comes to the films and such. That's my theory, anyway. Neil Armstrong is alive. Neil Armstrong is known for being the first ever person to walk on the moon, which took place in 1969. However, some people are surprised to find out that he died in 2012. Even for me, I recalled him still being alive as well. But this could just be because the other astronaut that was with him, and the second person to walk on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, is still alive today at the age of 92. And this could be who people are remembering. Billy Graham is alive. Billy Graham was an American evangelist and minister that died at the age of 99 in 2018. But for this entry, I think this refers to people believing he may have died earlier, as I did find a post on the Mandela Effect subreddit which shows that some people remember him passing away sometime around 2013. Even though that wasn't the case, with some people even recalling memorial and funeral services that never happened. However, it could be possible that they were remembering the deaths of other evangelical figures, such as Fred Phelps in 2014, Chuck Colson in 2012, Jerry Falwell in 2007, or possibly even Harold Camping in 2013. Mike and Ike Let's cut right to the chase here. How do you remember Mike and Ike's being spelled? Do you remember just the N, or the full word AND? Because I for sure remember just the N, even though this is actually false. This is really weird, because I don't really have a good explanation for this one. Maybe it's just because of the way we pronounce the name, saying AND really fast most of the time, making us think that it was just an N, but I don't really know. This is the song that never ends. For the 1992 series Lamb Chop's Play Song, there is a very well-known song where the character sings, This is the song that doesn't end. Even though people remember it being the song that never ends. But there are a couple of explanations here. For one, there are other versions of the song that existed before the show's release which actually do use never as the lyric. Also, it's probably another case of your brain priming you to think it's never because that's what you would expect. War, Death, Famine, and Pestilence At first, to me, this one was absolutely crazy. But don't worry, there is an explanation at the end. So, do you know the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse? Even if you don't off the top of your head, you'll probably recognize them when I read them off. You've got war, death, famine, and pestilence, right? Well, sometimes it's war, famine, death, and conquest. What? Well, allow me to explain this, because I have never heard conquest as one of the Four Horsemen before. The white horse is usually pestilence, but it can also be called conquest, depending on what denomination of Christianity you subscribe to. So not really a Mandela effect, just different interpretations and Bible translations. Krispy Kreme 
There aren't too many more of these spelling ones, but here's another one for you. But for me, this one doesn't really do too much. In fact, I can always remember it being called Krispy Kreme with a K. It's just a part of the branding that I've always noticed, but some remember it a little differently, spelled with C's. I think people just misremembered it that way because it would actually be the correct spelling in standard English. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Wait, wait, what? Say that again? You're gonna need a bigger boat. Okay, so yeah, Brody in Jaws says you're gonna need a bigger boat. Even though pretty much everyone I've heard say this famous quote says we're gonna need a bigger boat. So what's going on here? Well, I think this is actually pretty simple. Firstly, it's another thing where pop culture, as well as the fact that it's one of the most quoted movie lines ever, actually plays into what people remember. So it's likely it got spread around as we're gonna need a bigger boat, but why add in that part? I think this is just to add additional context, because in the film Brody says you're, but I mean they're both on the boat so it would make sense to say we're. Also it just sounds better this way in my opinion. And apparently a lot of people also thought so too, because this version has lived on through a lot of the fans of this film. Well, maybe except for the diehard fans, I'm sure they already knew what the real quote was. But still, it's interesting to note that in some of the subtitled versions of Jaws, it actually does say we're gonna need a bigger boat. So, I mean, who knows. Swastika flipped sides. So some may not know that the swastika wasn't always a symbol of the Nazi party. In fact, before they adopted it, it had many different meanings in different cultures, usually used as a symbol of spirituality. And this isn't really a case of the Mandela effect. The symbol can be found in various angles, with different meanings for which way it's facing. Objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. Now, for some, this is one of the strongest cases of the Mandela effect at work. And I gotta admit, I do remember it being worded this way. That being this message that could be found on the side view mirrors of cars. However, now that maybe portion of the phrase is missing and nowhere to be found, even though many people swear they remember it. Even song lyrics, as well as a book from Stephen King, reference that maybe part that isn't there. Some people even think that this is an egregious case of flip-flopping, remembering it being both ways and having it switched, and this is just such a weird case. I mean, I can kind of see it both ways from the perspective of creating this actual phrase, because saying maybe suggests that they may not always be closer than they appear because of the relative positions of cars or whatever objects can be seen in the mirror. But on the other hand, it really does make a lot more sense to just say R, because you don't really want to be wishy-washy with your language when it comes to whether or not something is there. And I mean, if it does appear in your mirror, then it is closer than it appears, because you literally see it. There's no maybe about it. And when people see that it is a guarantee and not just a maybe, hopefully they will be more careful. And I think that's overall why R does make more sense in this context. I hope any of that really made any sense. But I'm not really sure why people, including myself, remember maybe. This case honestly has me a little stumped. Nikolai Tesla not too much to say on this one, a very small difference that not a lot of people notice or remember, because many people in the west at least are more familiar with the name Nikolai, rather than just Nikola, which is Tesla's actual first name. Heart is directly to the left, not slightly to the left. Alright, so real life anatomy Mandela effects, this is where it really gets interesting. So where do you remember being told your heart is located? Is it on the left side or just slightly to the left? I can't really say I recall anything about this. I guess I just never really thought about my heart's location. But many claim that they remember it being far more to the left than it actually is. But there are a couple explanations here. 
Firstly, it is still technically on the left side, although it is more towards the middle. But also when you feel your heartbeat or pledge allegiance, you place your right hand on your left side, typically. Me Tarzan, you Jane. So many people recall from the original Tarzan film that he said, Me Tarzan, you Jane. So much so that it is often quoted in reference to the character and films, even though it was never said in the movie. But the reason this gets brought up and said a lot is because the original actor for Tarzan, Johnny Weissmuller, said it in an interview in 1932. And I guess the quote just kind of stuck after that. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas so let me ask you this question. Do you remember either the original book by Dr. Seuss or the film adaptation? Well, what is it called? In actuality, it's called How the Grinch Stole Christmas, despite many people remembering it as The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Even I thought that this was the real title before I looked into this. Now, I guess this makes sense that it's how because, you know, the story is the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas, but I'm just wondering where we got The Grinch Who Stole Christmas from. And uh, yeah, I got nothing. I mean, there's a movie called The Grinch from 2018, but that's fairly recent. The Duracell Bunny Came First Ah yes, the ancient rivals of Duracell and Energizer. Two battery companies with similar bunny mascots. So one clearly had to copy the other, so then who did it first? Some people would say the Energizer Bunny, which debuted in 1988, but actually the Duracell Bunny first appeared in 1973. And apparently the 1988 Energizer Bunny was a parody of this original one, but it was actually such a success that the company kept it and even trademarked its bunny, and there was a subsequent trademark dispute between the two companies leading the Energizer Bunny to be used in Canada and the US, while the Duracell Bunny could be used in the rest of the world. Which is why I guess some remember the Energizer Bunny being first, because it had exclusive rights in America. The name's Bond, James Bond. Definitely the most iconic quote from the film series James Bond despite it being slightly different than how people usually quote it. It's actually, my name is Bond, James Bond. Which, in my opinion, definitely doesn't sound as cool as just saying, the name's Bond. I guess this is yet again a case of people slightly changing a quote to just make it sound better, with it having stuck over the years. Tony the Tiger's Black Nose who remembers Frosted Flakes? What am I even talking about? I still eat Frosted Flakes all the time. Gotta be my favorite cereal of all time, too. But to be honest, I never really looked closely at the mascot, Tony the Tiger. But now that I'm looking at it, the blue nose does look kind of weird. And many people think they remember him having a black nose. Really, I think this just comes down to the fact that the black on his nose would match the stripes on him as well as his ears. So the blue just kind of looks out of place, and you don't really notice it until you're looking for it. Although the blue nose does match the color of the box. Coke Zero Brand Okay, so I think this one can be explained away, but still you might be surprised to hear at first that there is no such thing as Coke Zero. Like you won't find a bottle or can that says that. But there is a Coca-Cola Zero, even though many think they can recall just simply Coke Zero. Some claim that there are certain regional labels that just say that, but for the most part it's Coca-Cola on the label. And I think people just remember it as Coke because that's what people call it. I mean, nobody says Coca-Cola, right? You just refer to it as a Coke, even if it's Zero, Diet, Regular, whatever. So I think that's what's going on here. Marvel Comics letters are not connected. Not gonna spend too much time on this one, it's really basic and can be explained pretty easily, as again, it's just something that you don't ever really notice or pay attention to. 
but once I tell you, you'll never be able to unsee it, so prepare yourselves, I guess. All of the letters in the Marvel logo are connected, except for the L at the end, for whatever reason. Not really a Mandela effect or anything, just something that I don't think most people notice. A frog will stay in boiling water. So there's this really famous metaphor, I'm sure you've heard at least once in your life, about how if you put a frog in boiling water, it will jump out. But if you put it in normal water, and then slowly heat it up to boiling, it will stay there until it cooks to death. And this isn't really meant to be taken literally, it's a metaphor that's used to represent people not reacting to or being aware of something bad happening as long as it happens slowly rather than immediately. But as an actual experiment, this has been proven false. Because frogs don't really just sit still, it will jump out of the water before it gets hot. So where does the Mandela effect come in? Well I guess people think it's a case of the Mandela effect, because this experiment turned out to be false, despite it being kind of a well-known fact before it was fully researched in the 90s, but I'm not really sure. Dazed and Confused Globe the 1993 comedy film Dazed and Confused has a particular globe that has sparked quite a bit of conversation, as some believe it could prove that we live in an alternate reality to the one seen in the film. Because there is an unknown landmass located to the left of Australia, but this island can be explained. It is actually what's called a cartouche, which is an emblem that usually contains a title or scale for the map. New Zealand is to the left of Australia. Another geographical Mandela effect. This one isn't very popular, but a Reddit post does describe one user's experience thinking that New Zealand was always to the left of Australia on a map before it was actually changed. Although many people chimed in that live in New Zealand and Australia and confirmed its location has always remained the same. September 22 slash 23 2011 anomalies due to CERN testing. We're back to talking about CERN. Here's a really interesting conspiracy for you. So on the date of September 22nd, 2011, CERN gave a report that allegedly violated Einstein's theory of relativity because they recorded particles moving faster than the speed of light, which wasn't thought to be possible. Now I guess some believe that this event also caused Mandela effects, due to shifts in our reality on this specific date, but uh, apparently this happened due to faulty equipment. So uh, yeah, rip this theory I guess. Hitler had brown eyes. This is a fact that I and many others thought was true, and something that was generally accepted by most people, but in reality Hitler had blue eyes which kind of ruined the irony of the fact that he had brown eyes, despite blue eyes being what the Nazi party thought was ideal for their Aryan race. Now, it could be that this was spread around to actually make Hitler seem like a hypocrite because he didn't have the blue eyes, but it's also possible that this was just something that wasn't well known, because a lot of the times, videos and images of him are in black and white. Eli Whitney was black. The cotton gin was an invention created by Eli Whitney Jr. that contributed to a growth in slavery in the American South, as it made cotton farming a lot more profitable. And a lot of people remember the irony of the creator of the cotton gin being an African American and possibly even a slave himself, because this invention only led to more slavery. I'm pretty sure I even learned this in school at one point. But the truth is, the creator of the cotton gin was white, and apparently this was neglected as a fact in a lot of American public education, and many people remember being taught that he was black for some reason. Apparently it was said that Eli thought the invention would reduce the need for slave labor, but we know it really had the opposite effect, so I'm not really sure where this whole misconception came from. Eisenhower Dime 
Some people remember incorrectly that the 34th President of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower, appeared on the dime. But in fact, it is the 32nd President, Franklin D. Roosevelt, that appears on the dime. However, from 1971 to 1978, Eisenhower did appear on the dollar coin, so this is probably what people are remembering. Also, it's kind of hard to recognize who is on the coin just from looks alone. A lot of them look similar if you don't know for sure who they are. 60 plus US states. This is just wild to me that someone from America would even think this. I've always been taught since like the age of like 5 that there's 50 states. I couldn't even really find much on there being 60 states at all. I guess this is just some kind of wild conspiracy. But I did find some people who remember learning there were 52 states, most likely thinking that Alaska and Hawaii were those two. And that's a lot more understandable. But no, it's always been 50 states, ever since Hawaii joined in 1959. The peace symbol, feet up. Okay, so everyone knows and recognizes the peace symbol, I'm sure. But for some, they think there's some kind of flip-flopping going on. Or that they remember the symbol inverted originally. But no, it's always been like this. Because it was created in the 1950s as part of a nuclear disarmament movement, using the semaphore signals for letters N and D, which stand for nuclear disarmament. The Thinker's Fist on His Forehead Does this image of the iconic Rodin statue, The Thinker, look off to you? Well, for some it does. Some people remember him resting his fist on his forehead, not his chin. But uh, like a lot of other ones on this tier, specifically I always remembered the chin. Because well, it just makes the most sense, right? I mean, usually when you think of the intellectual thinking pose, you imagine the hand on the chin, right? Not the forehead. However, there are quite a couple of books that reference the thinker as touching his forehead. So I could be completely off base, but I just don't think I see it with this one. Also, Rodin also created a statue called the Age of Bronze, which depicts a man holding his forehead with his hand. But I doubt this is what people are picturing. Honestly, this could be because of similar poses not related to statues, such as Tim Tebow's iconic football pose. The pyramids are aligned with the Orion constellation. This is more so a proposed fringe theory at explaining the arrangements of the pyramids in Giza than it is a case of the Mandela effect. But the theory goes that there is some kind of correlation between the three largest pyramids of Giza with the constellation Orion. This is because it is thought by some researchers that the angles between the three stars in Orion's belt are an exact match with the pyramids. But this theory hasn't gotten much credence by the greater scientific and astronomer communities. The North Pole has land. So some of you might be surprised to learn that the North Pole actually has no land. It's not a snowy arctic wasteland or anything, it's just water. I myself was quite surprised to learn that fact. And this isn't a case of the Mandela effect at all, just a lesser known fact. Because in various pieces of media and such, the North Pole is portrayed as the home of Santa where it's just kind of a snowy and cold landscape. Also, the water in the North Pole is for the most part frozen over, which does create a surface of ice, which is what we could be thinking of when we imagine the North Pole. Tiananmen Square Tank Man was killed. This is another moment in history that a lot of people claim they remember and were even taught that is false. This is referring to the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests, which is an event where a lot of people died in a massacre. But the Tank Man wasn't one of those people. Who is this we're even talking about? This guy right here, who stood in front of a tank in protest of the Chinese government and appears in well-known photos. A lot of people recall him being killed or even run over by the tank, but actually he never was. At least it was never recorded. 
as he is still an unidentified person. So he very well could have been killed later by Chinese authorities, but we really don't know. It was never reported, at least in any way that I could find that he was run over or anything like that. But the simple explanation for this is that there were protesters that were run over by tanks in the massacre, but just not this specific individual. Blood is blue in your veins. This is another example of simple misinformation, like a lot of the stuff in this tier to be honest. But this again was something that I remember being told at least once as a kid, and I definitely believed it. That being that blood is actually blue in your body, which is explained by the veins that appear blue. And blood only turns red when it is exposed to oxygen. But this is just a myth and misconception. Blood does slightly change color when it is oxygenated, but it only becomes a slightly darker red. That's it. Lindbergh's baby case went cold. In March of 1932, a 20-month-old baby of the Lindbergh family named Charles Lindbergh Jr. was abducted from his crib in their home, and there was a massive investigation into this baby's disappearance, which also involved a huge trial and even a ransom. But on May 12th of that same year, the child's body was found and a man named Richard Hauptmann was found guilty and charged with the murder, and was executed in 1936, although some have since began to question his guilt. A lot of people though have different memories of this event, which makes sense considering it's such an old crime and story. Some remember the baby never being found, while some even remember him being found alive, but none of these are true. But these misconceptions and rumors could be because some people doubted that the corpse found was the Lindbergh baby at all, and some even came forward years later claiming to have found it as either some sort of hoax or prank. Elisa Lamb died in a closed water tank. This is a rather dark and infamous case that a lot of people familiar with true crime probably know about. The case of Elisa Lam, a Chinese-Canadian woman who acted erratically and went missing at a hotel in Los Angeles, and was eventually found in the hotel's water tank. The Mandela Effect is that many people remember reports of the water tank being closed, which they thought was a big deal, considering she managed to get in there somehow. But if you look at reports of the incident now, it says that the water tank was open. It could be the case that originally it was thought that the tank was closed for whatever reason, and was reported as such by the media, before it was eventually corrected as the water tank was actually open at the time that she was found. It's not just news media either. I think I remember quite a few YouTube videos reporting that the tank was closed. So that could be also where this misconception comes from. Personal Mandela Effects. And finally, for the last one, we have Personal Mandela Effects. And this is where I ask you guys some strange and interesting cases of the Mandela Effect that you have noticed that maybe not a lot of people have talked about or noticed, or that are particularly important or fascinating to you. And I'll give you guys a few for me. So first off, this one really blew my mind. And it's a decently well-known one at least if you're a fan of Black Ops 2. So remember the map Standoff? Yeah, me too. Great classic map. Been remade a couple of times too. Surely you remember this part of the map. It's near the center of it. But can you remember this yellow sign being here? No? Well, you're not alone. I don't remember this either. And this isn't something that was changed later on. Apparently this sign has been here on the map since 2012 but I've never noticed it, and have never heard anyone talk about it until it got brought up as a case of the Mandela Effect. I mean, you'd think you'd notice or remember something this big on the map, especially since you can bounce grenades off it and stuff, but for some reason to me, it just seems so out of place. But uh, besides that, I don't really have any that I can remember from my actual personal life, but I'll leave you with one more that kind of blew my mind when I saw it. And maybe it isn't so much a Mandela effect, and more so just like a crazy fact. 
But you know the saying about putting things on your bucket list, right? Of course, everyone knows what a bucket list is. A list of things you want to do before you die. But what if I told you that this saying was only recently invented? Like, very recently. I'm talking this movie called The Bucket List with Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson, released in 2007. Yeah, this movie that you might not have even heard of created this saying. I thought it was a very old thing that people said for a long time, but no. There was always the saying, kick the bucket, which is probably why it's called a bucket list. But still, no one said bucket list before 2007. I mean, isn't that wild? A lot of people claim to have remembered saying this or hearing this said way before this, like in the 80s and 90s, making it a crazy fact is, well for some people, a really weird case of the Mandela Effect. And that covers this really interesting topic and iceberg for today. Lots of fascinating and peculiar cases here. Some that are still really hard for me to wrap my head around. Still, this was an incredibly fun video to make, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching and making it to the end of the video. Like I said before, if there are any more interesting cases of the Mandela Effect that you know about, please feel free to leave them down below. I really love looking into these. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. It's been me, Sourcebrew, and I'll see you with the next one. Peace.